morning, Nick Malice. How are you? I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm fine. I want my audience to know today I'm speaking with Nick Malice. He's the vice president of, con of con con excuse me, Conservative Ocean Plastics. Nick, thank you for talking with us about plastics. You know, plastics are in the news. We're talking about, you know, uh, single-use uh, plastic, and you see it from a different perspective, maybe. Could you tell us what you know as the vice president of the Conservation Ocean, Ocean Plastics? I sure can, and you're right. Plastics are in the media every day, but they're also, unfortunately, in our ocean. And plastic pollution is one of the most prolific visible threats facing our ocean today, with an estimated 11 million tons of plastic entering the ocean every year. And to put that in perspective, that's equal to more than a garbage truck's worth of plastics entering the ocean every minute. And so we know it's a problem. We know it has very real impacts on the animals and communities that depend on a healthy, thriving ocean. Since the first international coastal cleanup, more than 17 million volunteers have collected nearly 400 pieces, excuse me, 400 million pieces of trash, totaling more than 350 million pounds. Now, that's just in the ocean where you work, so I'm going to think that it's bigger than that. That's exactly right. That, that, those incredible numbers through international coastal cleanups, uh, almost 40 year history represents just a single annual day's effort. And we know many of our partners around the world, many organizations around the world are leading cleanup efforts every day in their own communities. So we unfortunately know the reality of the situation is far worse than what the data show. And that's why it's so important that we commit to not only do cleanups, but also think about how we reduce the amount of unnecessary plastics that are being produced, used, and sold in our daily lives. I know you're picking up plastics, but what are some of the most common uh, littered items in the ocean and around America anyway? Yeah, so Ocean Conservancy's historical data show that single-use plastics like plastic bags, bottles, straws, food takeaway containers. These are the most common items year after year that are found on beaches and in waterways. While other debris like lost or abandoned fishing gear, which may not be as abundant, we know is the deadliest form of debris, which is also made of plastic because it poses a very real threat to organisms small and large throughout the ocean. When you're doing these cleanups, how do you get volunteers? We are fortunate just to be able to spread the word and mobilize volunteers in all walks of life. Through an amazing global partner network, um, we have more than 500 partners uh, spread around the world in over 100 countries. And through social media, through traditional communications, we highlight the events. And it really, at the end of the day, just symbolizes the fact that the global community has said enough is enough. And we see a passion and commitment to trying to keep, and, and everyone doing their own part, to keep plastics off of our beaches and out of the ocean in the first place. Nick, finally, as we wrap up, what changes need to occur for your job to be less taxing or for you to go away and find a new profession? It's funny you say we always say success is putting ourselves out of business. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I think first and foremost, uh, join the cleanup. You can visit signuptocleanup.org to find a cleanup near you. If one is not available near you, you can download our clean, our app Clean Swell, which allows you to do a cleanup anytime, anywhere, and make a real impact in your community. More broadly, we can all just rethink our daily lives and think about what small changes can we make? Maybe just skip the plastic bag, maybe skip the straw. And incrementally, as a global society, these small changes really add up just to reduce the amount of plastics that are available to enter our ocean in the first place. Okay. Now, I'm going to take this one from Instagram, and it's a little bit different, but they say once there was a movement in a lot of states about no paper or plastic, and that movement's gone away. How do they start their county in being interested in paper or plastic? Sure. Well, first off, you can visit Ocean Conservancy's website at oceanconservancy.org. We have a range of materials that share how you can mobilize local communities and advocate for policies. Um, that's a great, a great starting point. And more broadly, um, we can go out, 
mobilize people, join it, clean up. And from there, we see a transformation in people's behaviors and attitudes towards demanding change in the local community. So it's both mobilizing people and also building on the many successes that are out there. And again, you can find them at our website, oceaninsurgency.org and mobilize a cleanup at signuptocleanup.org. Nick Malice, thank you for the work you do. This is truly God's work. I really appreciate what you do. And thanks for being on the Valder BB show. Thank you so much for giving us time today. I appreciate it. Take care. Hey, I'm Valder Beebe. I broadcast on radio, streaming TV, podcast, and in print publications. I interview the world's most fascinating authors, all because I love a good book. This summer, I partnered with WPS for BB's Summer Book Giveaway. We're giving away New York Times bestsellers and award-winning books. Books that inspire me, and I'm sure they'll inspire you. To be eligible to win a copy of Jesus Can Give You a New Life, answer this question. What is God's greatest gift to mankind? You'll find the answer in John 3.16 of the Bible. Send your response to the email at the bottom of the screen. I'm Valder Beebe, and I'll see you for the next BB Summer Book Giveaway.